that better? Yeah. All right. Well, good morning and welcome. There are plenty of seats down here in the, in the front off to this side. I'm Jenny Angler, and I'm president and CEO of Family First Health. We're a community health center that uh, provides medical and dental care to folks um, in our community that need it most. But today, I am wearing a different hat. Um, I have had the opportunity for the past few years to be chair of the York Federal Fellows Alumni Association. And for those of you that aren't familiar with the York Federal Fellows Program, um, it is a scholarship program that allows nonprofit executive directors and leaders uh, to participate in a year of uh, fellowship with one another, a cohort of learning, and an opportunity for personal and professional development, um, all funded through the generosity of um, the York Federal Savings and Loan Legacy. And so as a cohort of individuals, over 50 now, that have had the opportunity to participate in this local um, development opportunity, professional development opportunity, we have long had conversations as a group about how we strengthen our collective impact, how we as a group of folks close to issues um, uh, that that span the spectrum of the nonprofit industry from arts to health to education uh, to uh, basic services and supports for community residents. Um, we've had these conversations about what does collective impact look like and how could we be a part of that. And a couple of years ago, we started in earnest thinking about how to uh, bring an opportunity for an online giving day to the York community. And um, after lots of research and conversation and uh, learning um, in 2018, we will have the opportunity partnering with all of you and hopefully a whole lot more um, nonprofits to uh, bring this opportunity to York. And I wanna pause a second and thank um, Bob Pulo, who not only uh, created the vision to use the York Federal Savings and Loan uh, legacy to promote leadership development for the nonprofit community, but also is um, our first uh, uh, philanthropist kind of taking a risk on this event and um, helping us pro by providing seed money to get this event started in this community. So um, I'm here to really just welcome you this morning, provide you a little bit of background, and then turn it over for a lot more details and um, certainly an opportunity for your questions. You each got a, um, an index card when you came in the uh, room, and we really ask that you, with the size of the group and the mic and the sound, if you have a question as we're going through, jot it down, or two or three, whatever you can fit on the index card, and um, just hold it up. We'll be coming through uh, this main aisle several times throughout the presentation, and then we'll work through all those questions and answers um, at the end of our time together this morning. We're also really pleased to have uh, some folks from uh, Lancaster County with us this morning, uh, from Lancaster Girls on the Run, that will be sharing a bit of a case study as to how they've leveraged the online giving day uh, that's been so successful in the Lancaster community over the past five years, um, the opportunity to share with us a bit of a vision about how this might look for you and your organization. I really wanna emphasize that um, this opportunity to bring Give Local, to uh, host Give Local York, is an opportunity to have a platform and a program for each of you from all your different perspectives to plug into and really help make this day uh, a day of giving and support for the nonprofit sector and really a day of celebration of the positive impact that the entire nonprofit sector is able to provide to our community. So at this point, make sure I covered everything I was supposed to cover. Um, I'm gonna turn it over for the things that you're probably most interested in hearing, which are all the details. And I'll turn it over to our very capable um, organizer for the event, Megan Caesar Hess. <laughs> bring this over here so I can access the presentation. Thank you all so much for coming today. Um, at first, when we were talking about having our first info session and we reached out to Anne to see if she could host us here in the theater, we were thinking that we would be in the black box studio, 
Um, and she was like, how many people do you think are coming? We're like, oh, 30 to 50 maybe. Um, so there are 150 of you here today, which um, I think just speaks volumes to the excitement around this event. Um, and it's very encouraging for us uh, as we start moving forward. So um, we're gonna go through sort of the details. We'll start at sort of a top level, I'll go through, and then we'll dive into uh, some more of the guidelines. Um, and then we'll open it up. Uh, we'll have some uh, visitors here from Lancaster to talk a little bit, and then we'll open it up to questions. So this is really sort of, we were saying what we feel kind of like is the official kickoff. We have sort of the announcement and the launch, um, but here you all are today, and we're uh, gonna embark on this journey together. Um, because this is a first time event, we have a lot of flexibility to build it and to make it whatever we want it to be. Um, so we're kind of figuring it out together, and I think that's exciting. So. Uh, Give Local York uh, is part of a larger national initiative that takes place in May called Give Local America. Um, it is a giving day, uh, and what happens is communities across the country um, essentially select a day in the first two weeks of May um, to host their own uh, Give Day initiative. We have selected May 4th um, because it is First Friday, so we get to build on the excitement that's already taking place. Um, it's also Star Wars Day, so I think there's a lot of theme <laughs> potential there. Um, but we are working with um, a website partner um, called Kimbia, and Kimbia builds these Giving Day uh, platforms. They do the Extraordinary Give website. Um, they know what they're doing, um, and they build these websites for all of these communities across the country that participate in Give Local America. So we are Give Local York, and we are coming May 4th, 2018. So what this is, um, for the first time ever, York is going to be transformed into a community-wide celebration of generosity um, that will benefit hundreds of nonprofits in York County. So this is an online give, um, but the day itself is meant to be a celebration, and it's about building a culture of philanthropy and generosity it's about introducing yourself to thousands of new donors, of building awareness, um, and really having fun with it. So um, we get to be creative and um, really think outside the box as we start to move forward with our fundraising efforts. So our goal for this first year is to have at least 200 nonprofits on board, raising at least $1 million in 24 hours. So this starts at 12 a.m. on May 4th and it ends at 11.59. Um, and we will do any and everything to make that happen um, and to have fun with it along the way. So we are doing this. Sorry. <laughs> okay, so why are we doing this? We are doing this to inspire giving in your county, to support hundreds of your county nonprofits to really build a community um, by celebrating generosity and to promote co collaboration amongst all of you. Um, and I'll share personally um, what I've been saying as I'm, as I'm talking to people. If you've paid attention to Give Days in other communities, if you've seen the Extraordinary Give in Lancaster, the, the dollars that they raise is phenomenal, millions of dollars, that's amazing. But for me, um, what, what really inspires me to do this is the feeling that you get by watching that community have this Give Day. It's inspiring and you see what pride they have and what excitement. Um, and that community building piece is really why I wanted to be a part of doing this. Um, so it's not just about the money. The money obviously is fantastic, um, but it's really about community building and working together um, and, and teaching your county what it means to be philanthropists and that anyone can be generous and anyone can be supportive of the work that we're doing. Um, so keep that in mind just as we're, as we're moving forward. So how it works is on May 4th, 2018, between 12 a.m. and 11.59 p.m., people will visit Give Local York Dot org, um, which is where our main giving platform will be, the online giving platform. All of the participating nonprofits um, set up their own profile page. You have the ability to customize it uh, with your logo and video and photos um, and really tell your story. And um, the uh, donors who come to the website have access to the entire list of all of the participating nonprofits. You also self-select your categories. So if a donor comes to the site and says, you know, I don't know who I want to support, um, but I know that I love animals. They can click on that category and pull up all of the organizations that are doing work that support the cause that they care about. Um, so donors designate directly online to the organizations uh, to make their gift. 
Um, they also have the ability to uh, support the stretch pool, um, which we are working feverishly now behind the scenes to build the stretch pool. Um, and we'll get into uh, a little more nitty gritty with the stretch pool in a little bit. Um, but basically the stretch pool is extra opportunity for added dollars to make gifts go further on that day. There will also be prizes throughout the day, um, select hours throughout the day, or depending on our fundraising efforts, every hour throughout the day, to really motivate givers, to incentivize, um, and to add extra benefit to organizations and make the gifts go even further than the stretch pool. Um, so all of the, the giving is done online, um, but in addition to the online piece, um, it's meant to be this celebration. So uh, in addition to online, we have uh, basically one big party is what we're trying to throw all across York County. Now because it's First Friday in downtown York, we have the ability to plug into the activities and the excitement that's already going on down there. Um, Central Market is on board to serve as giving headquarters in downtown York that day. They will host the wrap party for us at night. Um, but this is not just about downtown York, this is about all of York County. Um, so we are working to um, build activities all across neighborhoods and communities um, all across the county. So Hanover is excited to get on board, Delta is excited to get on board. We had a great conversation um, with Robert Lambert, who I don't think is here, uh, from the library system to talk about using our libraries across the county as sort of centralized hubs. Um, that we can start to focus some of the efforts. So this is meant to be fun, we wanna get you out, we wanna get you in front of people and get you talking to um, potential new donors. Um, so this party aspect, you'll, you'll hear me talk about it, but it's, it's very important to me. And to all of us, I think. So it's meant to be a celebration. So why would you wanna be a part of this? Um, so, you have access to the stretch pool and the prizes, so in addition to the, the donations that are coming in online, there's um, ability to make your gifts go further. There's the opportunity to connect with donors through online giving and really build your online presence. Um, I know from talking with, with some of you, um, some organizations don't have the ability right now to set up for online donations. So we see this as really um, helping a lot of organizations uh, increase their operating capacity and um, and and getting some new tools in the process. Um, we're introducing yourself to thousands of new donors. Uh, the purpose of this day is to really uh, promote the heck out of it, uh, to, to make it unavoidable so people know that it's Give Day. And we have a, a huge spotlight shining on all of our nonprofit organizations. So the ability to get the word out about the work that you do and introduce yourself to, to new donors um, is huge. Um, along with that, bringing in new money. Um, what gift days in general have been seeing um, is about 36% uh, of gifts that come in are from new donors. Um, and that's true um, in, uh, in Lancaster. Uh, they, even in their sixth year, are seeing new donors every year. Um, so you have the ability to reach out to um, you know, an entirely new group of, of people who will be supporting you. Um, throughout this process, we um, are going to have several training series um, that will, the goal is to really sort of help everyone learn how to tell their story and to market themselves. So we're hoping that you'll walk away from this event um, with new techniques and marketing strategies that will not only benefit you on Give Day, um, but beyond Give Day, so May 5th and beyond. Um, you're gonna engage your staff, your board and supporters in new and fun ways. Um, you get to plug into this community of givers and doers, um, this idea of collaboration and all of us working together. Um, and it's fun, it's meant to be fun. So we're all gonna, we're gonna have a great time doing this. So um, the basics on how to participate, and we'll get into the nitty gritty in just a minute, but um, basically you have to be a 501c3 or have a 501c3 fiscal agent. Um, your work has to serve the residents of York County in some way, uh, be they people or animals. Um, and there is a um, $150 application fee. So those are sort of the basics on how to get on board. Uh, we'll get into some details here in a minute. Um, so our role as the York Federal Fellows Alumni Association and the event, we are providing the platform, um, the, uh, the giving website, uh, the event itself, all of the pieces that go along with it, and we are providing the promotion. Um, so along those lines, we have some great media sponsors already on board. Uh, York Daily Record is in, Fox 43 is in to be our um, TV sponsor, and um, 
They are on air uh, nine hours out of the 24 hours that day. So they're excited to do it sort of telethon style and come out with us um, starting very early in the morning. Um, our York Media, we'll talk to you in a little bit. Um, and then Fun 101.3 is on board so far to be our radio sponsor. Um, we're in the process now of working on um, partnerships and fundraising and really finding ways to, to spread the word and get it out there. Um, but this is, you basically get to be a part of the work that we're all doing together. There are a few smattering of seats down here if you guys don't wanna stand, but, or you can. Okay, <laughs> so we are providing the, the platform and the promotion, and along those lines, um, the support. So I had mentioned earlier, you know, a training series um, and uh, the techniques that we're hoping to um, impart upon you to help you through this process um, and hopefully gain some skills uh, beyond, beyond just give day. So um, along those lines, we'll have some digital marketing toolkits, we'll have some tech talks, and you have an agenda in your packet of um, the scheduled upcoming tech talks. Um, these training sessions, working together and building this camaraderie around um, among all of these organizations, so finding best practices and finding ways to work together um, is of huge value. Um, again, this online giving support for some of these organizations that um, may be new to online giving or don't have any online giving set up. Um, and then, of course, inclusion in all of the promotion that exists around Give Day. So as a first time event, um, we have a lot of flexibility and opportunity. So, of course, we have other communities Give Days as models. We have the extraordinary give that we can look to. Um, and uh, the Lancaster County Community Foundation has been supportive thus far. I met with them last week and they were sharing um, some pitfalls to avoid and um, some wrinkles uh, that they've you know, uh, encountered over the years to, to help us along our way. Um, but we have the ability to make this event a York County event. So we're not just replicating the extra give, we're not just replicating other give days. What we're building is something um, that is unique and special to York County. Um, and, and we have a lot of flexibility to do that. So um, I wanna say what I've been telling people is sort of like, I'm not saying no to, to any idea people are throwing out there. And as I'm having conversations with folks, it's been exciting because you can see the gears turning and they're thinking about ways that they can be a part of this and they can plug in. And that's really the way that this event is going to be successful, is if everybody feels empowered and feels like they own a part of this day, um, that's what we want. We want we want different organizations and business supporters and uh, community members, school districts, universities, um, to feel like this day is for them. And again, that's in that spirit of building this community feeling, uh, building this community pride on, on May 4th. Um, so we're, we're doing this. This is sort of the uh, official launch. Um, and uh, we have the ability to, to build it in any way we want to. So at this point, we have opened up uh, what we're calling pre-registration. The official application will be available um, in early 2018. Um, we're working out some details with Kibia, our website partner. That application will be done online. So at this point, we have a, a pretty simple pre-registration form um, that is live. And really, that's just you saying, I'm in. We're going to do this. Um, and, and knowing that the official application process will come a little bit later next year. Um, we do have a mailing list that um, I hope most of you have signed up for at this point, also available on the website, um, so that you can uh, make sure that you're staying informed in terms of um, upcoming training sessions and, and anything you need to know. So we'll be uh, communicating with you throughout this entire process um, over the next six months, which is crazy to think about. Um, so yeah, so I encourage you, um, after you leave here today, if you think the event is something you want to be a part of, and I hope it is, um, to go ahead and pre-register, um, and that'll sort of get you on the, on the guest list um, to open those communications moving forward. So that is the basic spiel, and I think we'll take this opportunity then. In your packets, you all have the list of guidelines. <laughs> so um, we'll go through this in a little bit more detail here. So it looks like this. Okay, so the deadline to, uh, to submit your application once they are available um, will be April 1st, 2018. Um, and we're gonna try to stick pretty hard to that. So when the application is available, um, it will be available at the givelocalyork.org website. Um, as I mentioned, pre-registration is available now. Um, so the, the following guidelines, I'm not gonna read through word for word, but 
I encourage all of you to, um, to, to make sure you, you know what you're getting yourself into with us. Um, so, eligibility requirements, um, as I mentioned, is uh, that you have to be a 501c3 um, or uh, be a chapter or affiliate member in good standing of a national organization that has current tax exempt status or a current contract with um, a fiscal agent or sponsor who has the 501c3 status for you. Um, we would like you to um, have current Bureau of Charitable Organizations registration or that your fiscal sponsor has that certification. That the services you provide benefit your county residents in some way. So um, even if your organization is not located in your county, but your work <coughs> benefits your county, that counts. If your organization is in your county, but your work benefits people outside of your county, that does not count. That makes sense. Okay, um, that you have an active and responsible governing body that directs your organization. Uh, as I mentioned, there will be the $150 registration fee um, and that you agree to uh, abide by these uh, guidelines and be on board with the event. Those are the, the basic eligibility requirements. I mentioned the stretch pool earlier. So the stretch pool um, is basically a percentage match that happens on give day itself. So at the end of the day, um, when we have the final tally of all of the gifts that were brought in, um, whatever percentage of those total gifts your organization was responsible for bringing in, that is the percentage of the stretch pool that you will receive. So if your organization brought in 3% of the total gifts that were brought in, you will get 3% of the stretch pool added on to what you raised individually that day. That is how the stretch pool works. Um, we are in the process now of um, fundraising to, to build the stretch pool um, and also fundraising for event sponsors to help make this all happen. So that is stretch pool. Um, second page, this is an online only fundraising program. So for donations to be counted, donations must be made by credit card through givelocalyork.org and designated to a participant between 12 a.m. and 11.59 on May 4th, 2018. Um, donations made or committed at any other time or by any other method uh, will not be counted for purposes of the stretch pool. Um, we, um, as the York Federal Fellows Alumni Association, are assessing um, no fee um, our, ourselves uh, on give day. So there's no administrative fee that's coming out of those total gifts. Um, beyond the $150 application fee, um, there's no fee coming out uh, for us from an administrative standpoint uh, out of the gifts that day. Um, but as with any credit card transaction, there are some um, typical, typical transaction fees that will be assessed that day. Um, we are um, approximating that it'll be about 6% uh, uh, per donation, um, but with the Kimia platform, donors do have the ability to um, choose to cover the fees when they're making the donation, um, and we will make that an option for them. Um, so hopefully a lot of donors will, will take advantage of that. Um, so total gifts before fees um, will be used um, as the basis for determining your stretch pool amount that you receive. Um, this, the, the next section here, so uh, the participant should promote the event to its donors through methods of its choosing and leverage the platform and programming provided by us. So this event is, will be successful if all of us are working together to reach out to our networks <coughs> to participate in the event. Um, and what I've sort of been saying colloquially is that every organization is responsible for their own hustle, right? So um, this is your opportunity to engage your network and your friends and your mom's friends and your donors and get everybody on board. So um, with all of us reaching out to our networks, that builds that larger amount. So um, you are responsible for doing that through whatever way you want to. Um, any paid promotional methods utilized by you um, are at your discretion and expense. Um, we are working to put together um, a partnership with uh, some print sponsors um, to create marketing collateral along the lines of postcards and selfie frames and buttons and stickers and those sort of fun things that will be branded to the event but that you will be able to add your logo to and customize. Um, so that way we're all working from the same playbook and we have sort of the same, same brand standards. So um, that will be all a part of the toolkit that we're providing to you. Um, but if you choose to um, send out your own postcards or place your own paid media, um, you absolutely have the ability to do that. Um, but that is, again, at your own discretion and expense. Um, during uh, Give Day itself, 
Uh, we, as I said, are providing the, the platform. We have our partnership with Kimbia. Um, we also have a partnership with a fiscal agent who is going to be handling um, all of the financial stuff on that day. Um, so our fiscal agent will be the ones who are sending out the tax donation letters acknowledgement to the donors. Um, they will also be the ones dispersing the checks to you. Um, so we have that fiscal agent who's handling that nitty gritty. But you will get a, um, a live link um, once you set up uh, your application. You have access then to uh, the giving platform that day that in real time you can see who's donating to your organization and the amounts. Um, and that list belongs to you. Those are your donors. Um, so you can thank them in real time and then you take them with you and you cultivate those relationships and continue to grow them. Um, so you have access to the, the donor uh, links and, and list and contact information that day. Um, so you are absolutely encouraged to follow up with a thank you and correspond with them. Um, but the correspondence um, based on the relationship uh, with the fiscal agent and, and the tax entity, um, that correspondence cannot include the amount of the gift or any tax language. So our fiscal sponsor is handling the tax stuff. You get to handle the thank you and, and the pleasantries. Um, it is prohibited for uh, participant organizations to donate from their own organization to their own organization, so keep that in mind. Um, the minimum gift per donor online is uh, $25. There is no maximum amount. Um, and then the final report and payment will be issued to you within 90 days of the event close. Uh, and then just the, the final thing there is a, a you know, a waiver that we make no guarantees um, how much money you're gonna raise that day or how many new donors uh, you're, you're gonna receive that day. Um, but again, all organizations being responsible for their own hustle, uh, what you put into this event is really what you're going to get out of it. Um, and I think this would maybe be a good time to turn it over to our friends from Lancaster who can maybe talk a little bit about their experience. But, oh, and if you have any questions, write those down and we'll be sending people around to um, collect those so that we can have a question and answer session at the, at the end here. Um, but I'm going to invite up Carrie and Sarah from Girls on the Run Lancaster um, to talk a little bit about their experience with the Extraordinary Give and Give Days from a, uh, from a nonprofit perspective. My name's Carrie and this is Sarah. And uh, first of all, thank you for having us because we were sitting in your exact seats about five years ago, listening to another person like Megan say all of these great things and we were skeptical. We were thinking, how does this work? What are the fees gonna be like? How are we gonna get our people to actually wanna give online? How is this really going to work? And uh, the more questions we asked, the more it became pretty clear that we needed to try this, and we needed to be part of this energy that we started to feel in Lancaster the more people talked about this day of giving and this exciting 24 hours. So both Jenny and Megan have said a few words that begin with C that um, I just wanna highlight. A lot of the word, uh, the word community has been used a lot. Um, I think Jenny said the word uh, collective uh, quite a few times, and um, another word that both of them have said today is connection. And we at Girls on the Run view our extraordinary give as a holiday. <laughs> I think much of Lancaster would feel the same way. Um, most importantly, we view it as a day to connect with a certain group of donors that on other days we don't connect with. And there's this energy and this bubbling, we call it collective effervescence that happens in Lancaster on this day, leading up to this day, you can't miss it. And our donors hear about it, people just wanna be a part of it. I'm gonna have Sarah talk a little bit about our approach and how we get people excited about Girls on the Run. And please ask questions. Um, we're happy to share with you maybe some of the other nonprofits in Lancaster, what we've seen them do as well, because we all take a different approach and we all build our own little army and at the same time, we all are really there for each other. It's, it's, it's quite a feeling, it's hard to describe. I'll let Sarah talk about our approach. So as Carrie mentioned, it really is, it's, it's so much fun. It's like a big giant party. Um, even leading up to it, uh, for us at Girls on the Run, we, um, 
we have our 5K that happens to fall very near the, um, the extra give. And what we do is um, something we call guerrilla marketing. Um, so during the 5K, we plaster everyone's cars with a magnet, an extra give magnet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, <so laughs> and as Megan mentioned, um, some of the collateral that they'll be providing is branding for the, uh, you know, we call it extra give, but for the local give. Um, so we have the extra give logo on our magnets. And we see, we have seen some of these as old as four years old still driving around on people's mm -hmm. cars. And we'll take pictures of the staff and say, oh, there's a 2015 extra give magnet, yay. So that's, that's one of the approaches that we take for this. We also time some of our mailings around this as well. Um, we call this our gratitude report. So we send this to all of our donors and include a letter um, in this reminding them to consider Girls on the Run during the extra give. Um, and we think that's also a really helpful approach. Another thing that we do to um, engage our board and our volunteers is to um, have them reach out to past extra give donors via phone. Um, just that personal connection, again, is really helpful to remind them to consider us during the extra give. Um, and that has been a really helpful approach too and exciting for our stewardship committee and our, our board as well. Um, and I was excited to hear that you'll get real time, uh, real time feed because it is so much fun. It is, it's an excuse to be on your phone from midnight until 11.59 because you, you're glued to it. As the donations come in, you see the first one at midnight and then you wake up in the morning and I mean, it's the easiest day. <laughs> like you just have fun. Um, so you see them rolling in and what we did was an establish a, a number um, for a donation level that we would call as soon as that donation comes in and say, hey, we just saw that you gave at the extra give. Thank you so much. We're so grateful for that. Um, and actually Carrie and I make those phone calls, just the two of us, and it, it's fun as we're kind of buzzing around town. Um, another thing we do the day of the extra give is at 9 a.m. we've recruited um, some cape wearers um, and we run through town um, in downtown Lancaster with our capes. And it billows nicely. It does. It was quite windy this time, so it just sort of like flew behind us. It was nice. Um, and we used it also as a time for that group to stop into some of our donors. We mapped out our 5K little running, run, walk um, course so that we could fly into our donors and say, hey, thank you. Thank you for being a sponsor. Um, and hey, don't forget us today at the extra give. Um, it, just to sort of add to that party fun atmosphere. And so I'm trying to think what, oh, then what we do um, the evening, for the evening is we have a table at a restaurant, it's sort of the bar area, um, and we reserve that each year and invite our board members, invite our donors uh, to just come, you know, have a drink, uh, say hello, wear a cape. Um, <laughs> we also, a, a donation above a certain level, if you swing by, we'll give you a cape if you've donated. Um, again, we can check on our list and say, oh, you gave over $50, you can go wear a cape. So then they're wearing it downtown and you see all these little pink capes flying around. Mm -hmm. it's just really fun. So coming up with uh, fun little ideas like that to get people to come together, um, that, that sort of highlights most of what we do uh, from as Girls on the Run, just to kind of come at it from other nonprofits, um, having participated in Extra Give prior to being a part of Girls on the Run as a staff member, um, you know, my daughter said, oh, I really want to go to this open house. I love horses. Well, Greystone Therapeutic Riding Center publicized an open house at their riding stables. And they provided some snacks and, and drinks. And our whole family went out and got to pet the horses. And, and it was really neat to watch my daughter get on their computer and donate $25 because that's where she wanted to give her money. Um, also downtown, there's a, a sort of central hub where you see families milling around and kids sitting down at the computers and parents coaching them through, okay, well, you really like animals, let's select animals. Look at all the nonprofits in Lancaster that you could choose to donate to. So it really becomes this family affair. Um, 
And another thing that I uh, were involved with Habitat for Humanity, and they um, partnered with a, a local interior design store in downtown Lancaster, who um, basically sponsored them for the evening, provided all the snacks, provided all the food, that brought people into their store, um, and they made sales, and the Habitat board was there, their staff members, and um, it just turned into a big party in the store. I think almost every store or art gallery is booked by some nonprofit um, because they've made a connection that way and turned it into to a big, you know, downtown party. And not just downtown, like I said, Greystone is out in, in Ephrata. So it really just, it, it, it crosses the entire county, so. So another C word that I thought of when Sarah was just talking um, was collaboration. There are so many opportunities for you in this room to collaborate with each other. Um, for instance, this year, Aaron Zakers, who is um, a respite for children with, who are profoundly or severely disabled, they invited us to join them at the Ware Center for a few hours. And um, they kind of chose other nonprofits that served children of a certain age group, and we fell into that. So there are so many different opportunities for you to partner, and it makes it even that much more fun. Um, like Sarah said, it does become quite a party. Um, running around Lancaster City and having a hub like you'll have at the York Central Market is perfect because then you can tell people where to meet up with you and gather your friends and invite them out. Um, I'll share with you that one thing that we do internally, you know, that's all about all the fun that we've spoken about. We're, we're quite intentional in setting two goals. One is how many donors we would like to receive at the at 1159 and be able to look and say, oh, we had 245 donors this time. So we always set a goal for the number of donors we'd like and set a goal for a dollar amount that we would like to raise. So um, I pulled out some numbers this morning before coming and just to share with you what it has looked like for us. And every organization is different. Every organization invests differently in this in that you know we see this as part of our diversified fundraising plan. So our extraordinary give is not our biggest fundraiser. It is right in the middle, right in the sweet spot, and it's really, for us, a huge branding, an opportunity to get out there and have people see who Girls in the Run is. These kids are pretty noticeable. <laughs> so the first year, we didn't know what type of goals to set because we had no idea what this was going to be like. So we just shot in the dark and just grabbed some numbers and we were really happy to raise about $8,000 that year. And um, I believe we had about 110 donors. So, but then we had a benchmark for the next year and we set the goal of, I don't remember our goal for all these years, but I do know the numbers that we hit. We had 131 donors the next year. And we started engaging our stewardship team, like Sarah mentioned, and our board, and asking them to make phone calls and start reaching out. And we had this mailing that we did, another opportunity to touch our friends out in the community in different ways. Um, and we raised 11,500 the next year. And then we, uh, the next year, had 213 donors. And we like to look at how many of those are new and how many of those are returning. And we have a really healthy influx of new each year. And we raised 21.8 then the next year. Mm -hmm. And then we set the goal of 230 donors last year, and we had 245, mm -hmm. and we raised 23.8. Mm -hmm. So then this year, we did something really interesting, and we were wondering if, with this experiment what would happen. We had a large, our, a first time fundraiser called Kicking Up Kindness, because our theme word for the year is kindness. Go figure. <laughs> and all use this in our communities, right? So we had this fundraiser on October 20th, and the extraordinary game was November 17th or 18th. And um, we were really successful at our fundraiser, and we wondered how that would impact the extraordinary give, and it did impact it, because a number of our big donors happened to be at the fundraiser, and they gave in a different type of way, and that's perfectly fine. So this year we had the same number of donors, but we had a lot of new ones. Um, we had 245 and we raised $18,000. And we were elated with that. The reason is because we raised so much more at another fundraiser a few weeks earlier. So we do know in our community, if you wanna study someone, children deserve a chance. 
has um, really done a wonderful job. They create an army that night. They are, or that day actually, they all have t-shirts, the same t-shirts on. They have a headquarters right downtown and they're making phone calls nonstop. And who in this room um, represents a nonprofit that might help with animals? Okay, great, people love golden retrievers. <laughs> what we've learned is that people love animals. And um, the very, I think the very first year, the second year, maybe the third year, um, golden retrievers of Delaware Valley did extremely well. They were, we asked them, what did you do? And they really went beyond just Lancaster County. Because this is online, you can call anywhere in the world in your network and ask them to give. And that's what they've done. Um, and I think Water Street Rescue Mission this year was our highest fundraiser. And um, you know they had some awesome press the last few years that they really truly needed this money to continue to open the doors to our homeless and for all the other great services they have in the community. So um, yeah, it's been a terrific ride. We absolutely <laughs> love being a part of it. This year, there were over 400 nonprofits that participated. That's pretty amazing. And I think um, Courtney said before this, there are close to 500 here in New York nonprofits. Um, you should all do it. It's an amazing experience. So, you know, what began as a fundraiser has shifted the culture of a community. And um, it, it's just something that you have to feel it and experience it. And we're so glad you're going to have the opportunity to do that in May. So we're happy to answer any questions you might have. Sarah, do you want to add anything? I saw a question. What? Yes, go ahead. Do you have a budget for promotion? Like, how do you decide that? We did, the first few years, we had a, bu a small budget. It was about $2,100. And with that, we did a few yard signs just the first year, and then we didn't do that any longer. Um, it was mostly for our mailing and our magnets that we used at our 5K. So we would, um, Actually, after our 5K this year, a few of our friends had about six magnets on their cars. Um, but ideally, we want every single magnet. To, you know, we had about probably 4,000 people in our 5K, and we wanted every car to drive away with at least one magnet. And we have a whole mark volunteer marketing team that happened to be a few high school cross and college cross country teams that we gave them backpacks filled with magnets and sent them out into the parking lots. Any other questions? All right, we'll stick around if you want to catch us afterwards. Thanks for this opportunity and really have a good time with us. Thank you so much, ladies. Um, one thing they touched on um, that I'm, I'm really glad they did, um, and it's something that I've been hearing time and time again um, as I'm talking to folks who do other Give Days, organizations who have participated in Give Days, is the importance of setting a plan for yourself and setting a goal. Um, and whether that goal is dollars raised or um, new donors or, or whatever makes sense for your organization. Um, and you know, as they pointed out, this is obviously a first year for this, so we, we don't entirely know. Um, but the importance of setting that goal um, is, is really strong. So I'm, I'm really glad you guys touched on that. Um, and then also um, something that I'm really glad they touched on because it segues into our, our next speaker, um, is the ability of this day to really um, present yourself and to tell your story um, and to let people know who you are. Um, and I'll share that it's, it's our goal um, as we are promoting this event and we're gearing up uh, between now and May 4th um, is that we hope that May 4th is not going to be the first day um, that people hear about you. Um, so we're going to do our part to help tell your story um, and to promote all of the participating organizations and help get uh, the word out about you. Um, but uh, and, and some of the marketing training sessions and we have a storytelling session on the Tech Talk agenda. Um, that's going to be really key throughout this entire process. Um, and we have um, a valued partner in um, Our York Media um, who is uh, going to talk a little bit, uh, Rebecca is here today, just to talk to you a little bit about the services that they can offer to help you tell your story um, between now and, and Give Day. So, Rebecca. Good morning. Um, first of all, I think we only applauded once this morning, and I think we should be really excited that this event <laughs> is coming, and I think the organizers deserve <laughs> 
Um, I think this is an example of the really exciting things that York can do when we are willing to roll up our sleeves and rally together and do something uh, new and different. Um, I think this turnout is an example of how the community rallies around someone who brings an idea to the table. I was not prepared for this many people. I brought like 10 handouts with me, so that's why we have email. Um, our York Media, for those of you who are not familiar with us, we are a digital media company that helps local businesses and organizations tell their stories. Um, we started um, after uh, actually spending our careers working in local journalism and after experiencing a layoff, deciding to start our own business and uh, not only provide an outlet for local businesses and organizations to own their news, um, but for us to essentially brand ourselves as the good news outlet of York County and help tell the stories that nobody else is telling and highlight the great things that are going on in our community, um, like Give Local and, and many other things. So what we are, are looking forward to doing and, and helping with this event is to highlight the really incredible things that you guys all do. Um, we have learned that stories are a great way for people to uh, emotionally connect with what it is that you're doing. Um, we love telling the stories of people um, and focusing on people who have been touched and impacted um, by local organizations and the services that they provide. Um, a lot of the focus that we've had is on giving a voice to some of these people who maybe don't have a normal platform on which to share these stories. Um, we've done that not only through our branded content, but through focusing on different profiles that we do on regular people in our community. So not only do we help local organizations tell their stories uh, through branded content, but then we give them the ability to repurpose the content that we create. Uh, we have professional writers who have, in some capacity, covered York County as professional journalists, and they understand how this community consumes content and who our readers are that we're trying to reach. Um, and that is really valuable for a lot of, of organizations who don't um, necessarily have the resources to tell those stories on their own. So we give all of our clients that we work with the ability to repurpose that content. You can use that in any promotional products that you would use um, when you are um, applying for grants and you need to kind of give those examples of people that you've helped and the benefits of the, the services that you provide that you can repurpose that for any of your other needs. So we are essentially offering our storytelling services to nonprofits that participate in Give Local at a 50% discount. Uh, we wanted to be able to do that to empower you in some way to be able to tell your stories, um, to be able to reach people and emotionally engage them as you're trying to get out there and, and ask for them to, to give and support you. Um, we are a digital media company, so when we publish our stories on iorgmedia.com, we use social media advertising to put them in front of a targeted audience. So for a lot of organizations, if you're maybe really well known downtown, but you need to reach people out in the county, we can help you specifically target those audiences. Um, if there's certain demographics that you know have always been supportive of you, we can help you reach those demographics. So we really want to make sure that we not only help you tell your story, but that we help you put it in front of the right people that you're trying to reach. Um, so I would encourage you, if you're not familiar with us, please check out some of the stories that we have done on ouryorkmedia.com. Um, we regularly update them on there. You can get a feel for who we are. Um, I also have some handouts with me, not that many, but um, if you stop by and give me your card, I'll be sure to email you some additional information that you can take a look at later. some of the note cards, uh, all of the note cards uh, with questions. So we'll go through um, some, of, some of these and, and hopefully give you some answers today. Yeah, if you have any more, we'll have somebody <coughs> pass through. I'm sorry. <laughs> One more time. So if you have something else, please let us know. Um, so the first question uh, is how do you anticipate this to affect nonprofit development throughout the 2018 year? So, um, Meg has a specific example to share, but, but where I always start with answering this question that's come up before in, in us uh, talking about this is that, you know, we have an incredibly generous community in York. Some communities uh, launch these give days to promote philanthropy because it's a community that maybe isn't as giving as, as uh, the nonprofit community would like it to be overall. We have an incredibly generous community, uh, and we want to see it stay that way as a group of interested nonprofits. So 
this kind of mechanism allows for newer donors, younger donors, different types of donors than maybe our standard go-to folks in the community to start to get involved. And so this is really an effort to um, bolster philanthropy in our community for years and years to come. Uh, as I think you heard uh, Lancaster Girls on the Run mention, you know, this is part of your individual strategies. So knowing that this is our baseline year, you, you're gonna, we're all kind of feeling our way a bit, um, but you have an existing strategy likely for uh, gathering donations and funds to support your mission. This is another piece that you can factor into that. So um, this is not, this may for some organizations be the way that they raise money within the year. I know there are some smaller nonprofits in Lancaster that have consolidated resources. Others have used it as a way, as uh, Lancaster Girls on the Run mentioned, to um, diversify their funding sources and specifically target certain types of donors. I have a, a few metrics, a um, uh, few numbers that I'll, I'll throw out at you as well. As well. Um, and I think this question also comes up um, not only referring to individual organizations and how a give day can affect their individual development plan, but what it means for development at the top level for a community. Um, and so what uh, the, the research has shown is that give days, um, communities that host give days like this, experience um, an increase in philanthropy and philanthropists all year long as a result of this. So it's not a case of people give on give day and they aren't giving any other time of year. Um, and um, a really interesting metric that uh, Give Day Miami, um, who is, a, is a, obviously a large city that participates in Give Local America, um, their nonprofit participants um, that were surveyed said that 70% um, of them in, uh, saw increase in their year-round philanthropy after participating in a Give Day. Um, we've also seen um, we have first time givers, people who have never donated before in their life and, and don't consider themselves to be a philanthropist. Um, so from the Give Local America numbers, uh, we see 60% of people who are giving for the first time to an organization. 57% um, uh, of nonprofits um, in the Give Local America program said that they brought in new funding. Um, and 36% of donors who were surveyed thought that they donated more um, because the Give Day existed. So what we see is this really raising the bar for philanthropy in general um, uh, in a community, not just for our organizations individually. All right, next question is, can groups select more than one category? Uh, absolutely, so on the website, if maybe you're, you're touching kids and adults in the work that you do or different sectors, you're gonna um, self-select where, how you wanna describe the work that your organization does. Um, and that will, you also have an opportunity to um, provide a description and upload photos or videos. So any way that you want to describe, to tell your story, um, can be added to the website. People will go and be able to either learn more or uh, reinforce what they know about your organization already. Um, another question, is a pre-registration a definite commitment? Um, you know, I would say no, but that we plan to use those uh, names of organizations that pre-register as we're out talking to uh, folks to build enthusiasm about this event. So your pre-registration says you're pretty solidly in. Um, if uh, certainly until you do that final application and we get the, the backup paperwork, those kinds of things, um, that's not a, a solid commitment, but I would want you to know that doing the pre-registration puts you on the list when we go out to talk to folks and say, hey, here's the 40 people that are organizations that have already committed to this. So I just wanted you to be aware of that. Um, is there a goal for the stretch pool? There is a goal for the stretch pool. Um, we are shooting for $100,000 um, in our first year uh, to fundraise for the stretch pool. So. 100,000 is what we're shooting for. And we're well on our way, so it's very exciting. Um, are the prizes for the donors or for the nonprofits? Those are for the nonprofits. There may be some fun ways that they're attached to a particular donation, but then that would come back to that donor's nonprofit of choice that they were donating to. So lots more details about the prizes, but it could be fun things like, um, uh, the organization that gets the most uh, donations between midnight and 1 a.m. gets an additional thousand bucks in their um, in their pot um, or a lunchtime give or those kinds of things. So we'll have lots more details on those as we get closer to time. 
Um, will we have real-time access to um, the donors? Absolutely, and it's, I have to tell you, um, being an organization that provides services in Columbia, Lancaster County, we've been able to participate um, in their effort, and it is addictive. So, um, you know, you're watching, and who's up, and then the fun thing is, is that as uh, the key leader of the organization, I can reach out to folks right away and say, thanks, you know, that was really great that you donated, and it often catches people off guard, like, oh, how did you know I donated? Well, I can see. Um, and also might encourage you also through the day to know if you're expecting a certain donor and you haven't seen them yet, and it's 5 o'clock in the afternoon, you may want to give them a call or reach out to them and say, hey, did you remember that it's a day that I need you to get online and give? So it allows you to track all that in real time. Um, okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's see what the last one is. Uh, this is what I was Oh, this is a corporate match question. Can we have, so I'm assuming this is an individual nonprofit, have a corporate match option um, on the day of So um, we are, being in our first year and, um, and figuring out the logistics with our website partner platform, um, we are trying to avoid any additional matches uh, that we're setting up uh, beyond the stretch pool and the prizes that day. But that's not to say that if you have a relationship with um, a key donor in your organization um, that you can't talk to them about making a large gift to you that day. Um, but as much as possible, we'd like to avoid multiple levels of, of matches um, that require you know, keeping an eye on funding and, then, and, and adding on to that, if that makes sense. Um, but again, being responsible for your own hustle, you are absolutely welcome to talk to your donors um, and encourage them to make a large gift on gift day. Uh, are gifts that offer fair market value uh, benefits eligible? Um, we may be collecting some of those as it has to do with the overall event and programming and platform that's available, but on the day of the give for individual nonprofits participating, this is about money in the door. So those things, you can certainly be uh, connecting with your donors throughout the year around and manage, but those won't be part of what we're managing through the donations on the day of the give. Um, when will the media kits be available? Good question. Um, we are so we are we are working to pull together all of the different resources for you. Um, the the visual the visual uh, resources in terms of logo and branded pieces that you can start using that'll be available in early 2018. Um, as we start working with some of our other partners, um, as I had mentioned, the printing partners and those sort of pieces, um, that will be uh, you know probably more like Marchish. Um, it's my understanding from uh, talking with Lancaster and other Give Days that um, promotion really starts to ramp up uh, for the event itself about six weeks out. Um, so that's sort of our target to you know have everything in place well before then. You're of course welcome to start talking about this now, um, and we'll start sending you some um, as you start to pre-register and, and get on board. Um, we'll provide you with some of those visual pieces and some of the language that you can start using. Um, but then probably you know towards the end of uh, first quarter of 2018 is when we'll have everything set and, and ready to go for you. Uh, there's a question that asks, will there be an effort to coordinate events that nonprofits may want to hold in York City and beyond, um, and beyond established First Friday events, and so who should we contact? Um, I'll let Meg respond as well, but um, my, um, advice about that would be to gather your friends and like-minded organizations. This is not about, while well, we provide um, through Give Local York the hub and the, the platform and certainly ideas, um, we are not micromanaging this event. So we won't be successful if we try to. So this is really about you putting your best efforts forward, uh, as Meg has said, and this collaboration component really does work. Um, you described, uh, Lancaster Girls on the Run described a collaborative event this year. Um, Family First Health participated in a collaborative event in Columbia. And while we'd like to, we have a, a committee. Um, boy, we as nonprofits love our committee structures. And <laughs> we have one for this event as well that will um, help to give people ideas. We'd like to know what's going on. And we'll have a mechanism through the website for you to be able to say, hey, um, these three organizations, we're going to be getting together here at Dream Rights to do a fun event. 
um, that day. And so then we can have lists and promote those events, but these events are really yours to design. But yeah, Gert? I, yeah, I would say so. Um, we're happy to help make connections, um, and uh, we will absolutely share with you um, the, uh, the businesses or the, the parks or whomever who has reached out to us sort of offering themselves up as different locations and, and willing participants. Um, I'm hoping to pull together lists um, specifically in downtown York and in Hanover of um, businesses that have sort of opened themselves up uh, that are willing to allow you to come in and sort of ambush their office that day. Um, so we'll be sharing that information out with you and again we're happy to make connections um, but we ourselves will not be planning all of the individual events but I think connection is probably the, the key term to remember there. What are the uh, expectations for organizations on the day of the event? Um, and, and I think this has been a theme of the conversation this morning. This is really yours to, to make of it what you want. There are organizations that I know participate in other give days who um, do very little. They send out to their existing list of donors, here's the website, they do some Facebook posts, um, and uh, use it as, as a way to draw some additional dollars into their, from their existing donors. And then there are others um, that, that you've described from our friends in Lancaster to other events across the city who really blow it out and take this on as their, you know, maybe one of their primary activities uh, to engage and raise funds. So at any level, it's, it's okay. Um, and it still provides you the opportunity to take advantage of the stretch pool, connect with your donors, and be part of this larger event. But the level to which you take it is really what fits for your organization. Absolutely. Um, and, and just as, a, as another key piece on that, um, there are ways that you can um, start helping us now. Um, we do have a Facebook page set up for Give Local York. Um, we have a Facebook event set up for Give Day. Um, so as you start to um, firm up your participation and, and agree that you want to be on board, it would be amazing if you could go ahead and like that page and RSVP to the event um, and start sharing that information out to your networks. Um, because once we build that foundation um, as sort of the, the message conveyor, um, that will be helpful. So as much as we can direct people to um, our Give Local York social media accounts um, to start to build that audience now so we have more people who are there receiving the message on Give Day, that would be one step you can take right now. Okay. How do you vet the organizations initially and yearly to determine that the participating organization is actually and effectively providing charitable services to the York population? So as we've learned from other uh, Give Days across the country um, and really believe as a group of um, loosely affiliated uh, nonprofit leaders, the York Federal Fellows Alumni Association, is that this isn't about a day of, of strictly vetting participants. Um, we have great mechanisms within the community, uh, Cultural Alliance, United Way, others who have a whole nother um, scope and purpose in the way that they help connect funders with great causes and are, um, as part of that mission, really charged with taking a much deeper dive. The requirements, as you've seen them listed and, and you have in the packet, are, are very broad. And um, it is not our intention to do deep dive vetting. It is our intention that we have a basis of a broad section of the nonprofit community and, um, and for you to tell your stories to donors and donors will um, gain an understanding and donate where they choose to donate. So we, this, is, this event is distinguished from some of those other standard traditional mechanisms in the community and may allow some of you in the room who don't fit with some of those traditional mechanisms to find a way to get your word out more effectively and raise dollars uh, using this event. So that's another kind of uh, sub-goal of a gathering uh, like this. Are there any other questions that we didn't hit? Well, first of all, terrific presentation. Uh, are you looking to disclose your fiscal agent? Sure, our fiscal agent is uh, Philanthropic Endeavors. And so they're a local fiscal agent that helps nonprofits either in the process of becoming, uh, helps good causes in the process of becoming nonprofits, um, or helps maintain a small nonprofit's um, you know, status and uh, ability to receive donations. Quick question here. Is there a way that this is Is there a way uh, in looking at the actual organization, but people actually want to give to a program within an organization? Is 
Yeah, so that's a question that's already come up uh, several times. And um, because we are, because people are making what, what we want to be a tax deductible donation, um, that donation does have to go to the 501c3. So if the organization has decided that um, that's gonna go to one particular program, they can feel free to highlight that in the description. Um, I think that uh, maybe uh, I'll use your college as an example. Some of their club teams, sports teams, have come forward saying, hey, we would love to use this as an opportunity to raise dollars. If your college decided, because those are unaffiliated um, individual club teams, um, they can't individually participate, but if your college decided, hey, we're gonna use this as a day to help these entities raise funds, um, they could promote that within the website and then it would be very specific, but your College of Pennsylvania would be listed as the nonprofit um, for tax purposes. Exactly, and that would be described um, within the website and within the own, your own promotion that you're doing. Um, so, uh, you know, we can talk through specifics of that for any entity, um, but that is certainly, there, there are ways to help manage that. But ultimately, those organizations that will be receiving the funds will have to be 501c3 or have a fiscal agent to help them do that. So that was actually the flip side of the answer to this question, which is one of the benefits of a day like this is, is that for many organizations, this will be an opportunity to raise dollars for general operating. And um, so if you're giving to York County History Center, it, Joan can choose to use it within their budget, however that fits best in their general operating. Others may choose to become more specific, have specific partnerships or programs that they wanna focus on, so that can really be dictated um, by the individual organization and what's going to be most helpful for them. Um, and again, when you're filling out um, your application, you're filling out your profile, um, you have the ability to, there's a whole text section, so you can um, specifically um, explain if there are certain programs, um, you know, that you're trying to promote with this event. So you can tell that story within your, within your profile on the website. To the dollars are going to go back to the one organization with the 501c3. So, if, so basically, on, on, on your back end, then you'll be responsible for figuring out the financials, you know, how, where it's going to end up going once it comes back to your organization. Um, I think we have the ability to, is it three or four? Uh, an EIN can register three, three times. Three, three times. Um, and then you're responsible on your end for making sure you know the money's going where it needs to. You do have the ability when you set up um, your application, you'll put in your um, your checking account, your routing number. So if those different programs have their own checking accounts, that's a way to send the money in to to, um, to avoid any of that sort of back end stuff on, on your end. Um, but if uh, one EIN registers several organizations, then you're responsible for figuring out where your money goes after you get it. And each page would indicate that, so you would have an accounting and a tracking for that. Now, if you have an actual organization that goes and you have local offices, you can get the funds here. I want to make sure that under the Yeah, so as you register, you can specify that. Okay. So you're registering under when you're kind of checking the box of how am I validating I'm a 501c3, you'll be talking about your national organization and where do you want the money to go and how you're describing the services that are offered within York County. But ultimately, you'll set up the routing number and the address of the organization. Yeah. When a donor goes into the website uh, to donate, um, how do they find the organization? Let's say they don't know who they want to um, uh, donate to. How would they find uh, an organization? And is there like a marker, like a number that you assign 
So the website will be set up, um, you can search by name of organization. So if I know I want to go, then I can search that and I go right to their page. Um, when you're sending out links to your organization, you'll send a link that goes right to your page. So a person doesn't even have to land on that home page. They can be as efficient as possible and go right to your page to give. If you want to, um, and then ways to capture when somebody doesn't know, there'll be categories. So somebody can hit a category right on the home page. Um, they can, I've seen where they can hit in other areas where they can hit a geographic area. So if I'm really passionate about Dillsburg, um, maybe we can set it up you know, by geography as well. So there's gonna be several ways to search. I will tell you that the technology um, we'll be able to share with you as we get closer, really user friendly and um, very uh, easy to navigate. So I think that you'll find it for your donors and for yourself um, really easy to navigate. And like I said, if you're targeting your specific